Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov, known to history by his pen name Lenin, was a Russian revolutionary, Bolshevik, the greatest theoretician of Marxism, the founder of the world's first socialist state, and one of the most influential personalities of world history. From the very beginning, October 1917, irreconcilable debates about what kind of person he was and what role he played in Russian and world history have never stopped. Hundreds of articles, books, documentaries, and feature films have since been released in the capitalist world, and this outpouring of propaganda has gotten stronger with the collapse of the USSR. A vast library of myths has been collected to explain the rise of Lenin's political tendency in the historic Soviet state. Therefore, we decided to investigate a few myths about Vladimir Ilyich Lenin and tell you what kind of person he really was. Myth number one, Lenin was a German spy. The myth that Lenin was a foreign agent is one of the oldest and most enduring. This first manifested under the Russian Provisional Government, which accused their political adversary Lenin of German-sponsored espionage. At the time, investigators, prosecutors, and the bourgeois press tried to spark anti-Bolshevik sentiments in the country by discrediting their leader. Their investigations simply fell apart from lack of evidence. So far, no real evidence that Germany financed Lenin and the Bolshevik party has been found. Lenin did not receive money from the German Social Democrat Alexander Parvis, despite what the legend tells, because he simply had no business with him and even refused to meet with him shortly before returning to Russia in 1917. There is also no evidence that Lenin was directly sponsored by the German military general headquarters. The infamous Ciesen documents, often cited as the undeniable evidence of Lenin's collaboration, are forgeries created by the Polish journalist Osandowski out of his own anti-Bolshevik convictions. In the midst of the Cold War, American historian George Kennan conducted a comprehensive study of these documents, completely disproving their authenticity. Today, politicians and publicists try to renew the myth of Lenin's espionage, bizarrely accusing him of working for England. Like the others, this assertion is completely devoid of evidence, and the reality of events after the revolution completely refutes this judgment. Myth number two, Lenin hated Russia and Russians. When it comes to Lenin, you might hear about Russophobic statements. The basis for these statements are generally the invention of corrupt historians or Lenin's own political opponents. There is a fairly well-known quotation which goes, We must fool Ivans. Without fooling Ivans, we will not seize power. And is sometimes followed by an exact date. However, none of Lenin's works have such a quotation, nor is there any witness testimony to corroborate it. It was in fact the invention of the anti-Semitic publicist Anatoly Glazunov, who groundlessly attributed it to Lenin. Another anti-Soviet journalist, Georgi Salman, provides a dialogue in which Lenin allegedly uttered the phrase, I don't care what becomes of Russia, to hell with it. All this is only the road to a world revolution. Today this quote is quite popular among anti-communists, but the real Lenin never said anything of the kind. In actuality, Lenin's views were quite to the contrary. In his article on the national pride of the great Russians, Lenin praises the great Russian class conscious proletarians, and in the work, The Chief Task of Our Day, he writes that, Our aspiration to rise again from enslavement to independence, and our unbending determination to ensure that at any price, Russia ceases to be wretched and impotent, and becomes mighty and abundant in the full meaning of these words. Myth number three, Lenin eroded Russian territorial integrity. Lenin and the Bolsheviks are famously held responsible for the collapse of the Russian Empire. Today, mythmakers go even further to accuse Lenin of the collapse of the Soviet Union. It was not Lenin, however, who was to blame for the territorial losses of Russia after October 1917, but the Tsarist government, which for decades had pursued a chauvinistic policy of repressing the nations within the empire prompting the oppressed peoples to strive to separate themselves from the empire. Therefore, as soon as in February of 1917, the cementing power in the center weakened, separatist fermentation immediately began on the national outskirts. Already in the spring of 1917, before the entry of the Bolsheviks into power, 
a self-proclaimed nationalist power arose in Belarus and Ukraine, which no longer submitted to the provisional government and was hostile to the Bolsheviks. Poland was already taken during the fighting of the First World War. Finland had political autonomy as part of the Russian Empire and became virtually independent until the establishment of Soviet power, which only officially confirmed its independence. Lenin not only did not ruin a united Russia, but gathered its divided territories into a new socialist state, the Soviet Union. Yes, the moment that the USSR arose in 1922, it was smaller than in the Russian Empire, but included most of its constituent territories. In less than five years, Lenin managed to prorogue national separatism and create a new basis for holding together a brotherhood of nations. Accusing Lenin of destroying the Soviet Union is a simple attempt to justify the real culprits of this great tragedy. Not the principle of federalism proposed by Lenin and not the Marxist-Leninist theory led the Soviet Union to destruction, but the decay of the Communist Party, the betrayal of party leaders, and the restoration of capitalism. Myth number four, Lenin was avenging his brother. Vladimir was not the only one in his family who has committed himself to fight for a brighter future. His sisters, Anna and Maria, also participated in the revolution, as well as his brothers, Dmitri and Alexander. Alexander Ulyanov, being a very capable student at St. Petersburg University, took an active part in the revolutionary organization Narodnaya Volya and founded its terrorist faction. Narodnaya Volya studied the works of the classics of Marxism, but maintained an older idealism. They believed that the assassination of powerful individuals could speed along the revolution. Based on these beliefs, it was decided to kill Tsar Alexander III. However, the attempt was prevented, and all involved, including Alexander Ulyanov, were arrested. With several other Narodnaya Volya members, he was sentenced to death. Despite the personal appeal for clemency of Ulyanov's mother, Maria Alexandrovna, Alexander refused to turn away from his principles by admitting fault for what he believed to be right. He was hanged at his prison at the age of 21. The death of Alexander was a tragedy for the Ulyanov family. A young student, Vladimir, also lived through the shock. According to the memoirs of his elder sister Anna, addressing the violence of Narodnaya Volya, he said, No, we will not go that way. That's not the way. Even then, Lenin realized the senselessness of terror, which was never used by the Bolsheviks. It is by no means a personal tragedy which made Vladimir a revolutionary. He, like his brothers and sisters, and other bright minds of that era, understood the prospects, the failure, and the inevitable death of the exploiter's society. As he grew into an adult, the study of the classic works of Marxism and an intensely studied political economic analysis of the real world turned Vladimir Ulyanov into Lenin the Communist. The desire to change society and to make human life better served as the main motive for his revolutionary activity and not some personal desire to take revenge on the royal family. Myth number five, the Jewish question. Lenin's ethnicity is a favorite topic among modern nationalists and anti-Semites who assert that Lenin was a secret Jew whose real name is blank. This theory allows the New Black Hundreds to incorporate the Great October Revolution into their fabricated worldview of a Jewish conspiracy. It is believed that Lenin was Jewish through his mother, Maria Alexandrovna, whose maiden name was blank. However, studies of her bloodline show that she was of Swedish-German origin rather than Jewish. The first bearer of the surname blank in the Ulyanov family tree is the great-grandfather of Vladimir, Dmitri Blank, whose nationality is unknown. Even if we consider that Lenin's great-grandfather was possibly of Jewish origin, this would mean that he was a maximum of one-eighth ethnically Jewish. This would be less considerable than his Central Asian origins, which are much stronger and came from his father's side. 
Lenin did not consider himself as a Jew, and in all official questionnaires, he wrote that he was Russian. In his own life, his Jewishness was not a relevant feature of his family upbringing. It should be noted that his nationality was not a subject of special attention, since, as a true internationalist, this was not a determining factor in his life's work. Myth number six, Lenin was immoral. One of the accusations that is levied against the communist has been and remains a lack of morality. The leader of the Bolsheviks is directly accused of amorality, claiming that Lenin openly denied morality. At the same time, at the same time, they neglect to clarify exactly which kind of morality Lenin denied. It is necessary to understand that morality firstly establishes the norms of social behavior and thus is different to each class and culture. Under capitalism, bourgeois morality prevails overall. By means of propaganda, this morality is imposed on the proletariat in order to maintain its obedience. Bourgeois morality justifies immoral wars, social inequality, enrichment of the wealthy at the expense of the poor, and predatory competition in all spheres of society. Everything that indulges profiteering is made moral for the capitalist. It was this morality that Lenin denied. Proletarian morality is hostile to bourgeois morality and rejects the injustices of the capitalist system. This morality unites and directs the working class individuals to build a new socialist society. Lenin did not deny morality at all. And to be precise, he denied bourgeois morality while remaining a moral man. Myth number seven, Lenin was rich. Anti-Soviets of all stripes like to explain the desire of Lenin and the Bolsheviks for power as a means of pursuing their own profit. So, let's see what personal benefits Lenin received after coming to power and what wealth he accumulated from his great nationwide robbery. The ethics of the Bolsheviks could not allow Lenin to live like a bourgeois official of the old empire. For example, in a letter of May 23, 1918, Lenin severely reprimanded Bonch Burievich, the head of the Council of People's Commissars, and Gorbanov, secretary of the Council of People's Commissars, for arbitrarily raising his own salary in excess of the established norm. The apartment of Lenin and the Ulyanov family in the Kremlin consisted of four small, modestly furnished rooms, where Vladimir's room served both as a study and a bedroom. Lenin did not choose limousines for himself, according to the catalog, and accordingly did not have garages filled with the luxurious vehicle fleet. The modesty of Lenin, who was at heart a proletarian revolutionary and communist, is complemented by another fact. In the early years of Soviet power, when the country lacked food, he was often provided with flour, meat, and other products. Instead of hoarding the surplus to ensure his own comfort, he sent these products to orphanages and hospitals, or, if these products were in small quantities, offered to divide them between a number of comrades, without forgetting the family of doctors that was treating him. The myths denigrating the good name of a great revolutionary do not withstand careful examination. Anti-Leninist mythology, being an integral part of anti-Sovietism and anti-communism, is increasingly used by enemies of the working class in the intensification of the class struggle. By spreading these lies about Lenin, the bourgeoisie and its servants pursue one goal, to discredit those who struggle for the liberation of the working class, with the aim of prolonging the dictatorship of the rich. Year after year, the worsening economic situation, widespread infringement of social rights and freedoms, repressive laws, and increased exploitation of workers put an end to these efforts. In our own time, the capitalist system is again on the verge of collapse. The class struggle is intensifying and the material contradictions within capitalism intensify it. Therefore, Marxism-Leninism has not lost its relevance and Lenin's dream of a society without exploitation or oppression will soon be realized.